Get Norm on your schedule 24 7 by signing up for Beyond the Norm at normandgoldman.com. Then you can hear the show commercial free when it's convenient to you. Plus, get all the Beyond the Norm extra segments at no charge. This is the Norman Goldman Show. This is a very potent weapon. I think it's uh, silly. When you're listening to the radio, Hold it up high, please. describe what you're holding, please. Marijuana advocates handpicked Iraq War veteran Sean Azardi for the inaugural sale. Now that is CBS News correspondent Tom Mustin in Denver, and we thank CBS News for you know letting us have that clip. And by the way, you know, as I'm showing you here, the legal legal pharmaceutical drug market. Global spending expected to surpass one trillion this year. Hey, guess what? The marijuana industry is massive business too. And incidentally, the correct name is cannabis. But in Colorado, guess what? They're going to be raking in all kinds of tax revenue. Hello, not putting people in prison. Can we find some common sense? Marijuana is already big business here in Denver, where it's been legal with a doctor's prescription since 2010. There are more medical dispensaries here than McDonald's and Starbucks combined. As expected, demand on Wednesday was high. We wanted to make sure we were the first ones, and uh, they didn't run out first. Now, did you catch that? Demand was high? It's hard not to make a joke there. That's Tom Mustin of CBS News, and we do thank CBS for that. And, you know, look, if you are if you are with us on AM 760 out of Denver, this is like one of your, if not biggest stories, one of your biggest stories. And I am with you. I hope you know I have been a, an advocate for legalizing, especially marijuana, taxing it, treating it like alcohol and tobacco. You've got a much better chance if your concern is children, if your concern is keeping it out of the hands of children, you got a much better chance of keeping the stuff out of the hands of kids if it's legal. I mean, you know, kids can't walk into liquor stores and buy bottles of Jim Beam and Jack Daniels and Sixes of Bud and stuff. I mean, you just can't do that as a kid. They test you. They, they check your ID, right? You want to buy cigarettes. They got them locked up, you know, behind glass now. You got to get a key to open the lock. It's a lot easier to buy marijuana when it's illegal because you go into an alley somewhere with some dealer who doesn't ask for your ID. The dealer asks for your cash. So, in Denver, common sense, pardon me, in Colorado, and especially in Denver, common sense has finally won out. Maturity won. Live in Denver this morning where some people have actually spent the night to be the first in line to legally buy weed over the counter. These are bud tenders here. They are helping customers decide which strain of marijuana to buy. Thousands waited in long lines for pot Wednesday when sales became legal. This is actually the largest crowd we've seen all morning long. Well, they have funnel cakes. They do have funnel cakes. <laughs> could make yes, a difference. They do. Well, there you go. Some people do get the munchies. Now, that's one of our patented montages. That's from KDVR there in Denver, CNN's Casey Wyans, and CBS uh, News. Good morning. Uh, this morning on CBS. So we put together a little montage for you. And look, you know, rather than using taxpayer resources to put people in jail, for, for marijuana, why don't we just, like, uh, tax it and get some revenue to build up the public and pay down our debts? Hello? Colorado estimates almost $600 million in sales this year. Taxes are expected to bring in $67 million in revenue. Much of that set aside for building schools. Now, that's Gabe Gutierrez of NBC News, and we thank NBC News for that. Just imagine if the federal government treated uh, marijuana like it treats tobacco and issued the stamps and the states added their own taxes. I mean, look how expensive it is to buy a pack of cigarettes now. If we did the same thing with marijuana, you know, the states would close their budget caps. We'd have fewer people in, in prison. I mean, it's just common sense. I'm glad to see America's waking up. I'm trusting that California will have a legalized measure on the ballot in 2016, other states as well. It's time America got mature and grew up. It makes no sense to have legal booze, legal cigarettes, and illegal marijuana. Now, if you want to be really sharp and you want to be really fun, you can say, well, Norm, what about cocaine and heroin? And uh, it's a whole different discussion. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that, frankly, because those are really seriously hard drugs. But uh, many of the same arguments apply. But marijuana is an easy one.
cannabis. That's the correct name. Cannabis is really the easiest call. It is a very mild drug. If used correctly, just like alcohol, I can't see any difference between alcohol and, and marijuana when it comes to the regulatory issues, the prohibition justifications. Uh, I've got to tell you, though, that because Colorado has launched us into this great new era here in 2014, I started with that. But I do have senior legal analyst time for you in 25 minutes. A lot of topics to cover. Mark in Seattle. Mark, you get us started in this new year. Hi. Happy New Year, Norman. This is Mark Taylor Canfield. How are you? Hey, man. Happy New Year to you. I'm looking forward to meeting up with you and the rest of the folks on January 18th. It's going to be a really important meeting. So. Anybody who's listening in Seattle, get your tickets January 18th in Seattle. It's at the hub. It's at the hub in Seattle. But I will have postings. I will, you know, which today is just we're at the very beginning of January. Mark, I will have postings and everything for everybody to see. Everybody will have plenty of chances to know, you know, where we're going to be. And I think it's called the Impact Hub, if I remember right, or the Hub Impact. It's downtown. Yes. Yeah, it's really close to everything. It's easy to get to. So. Transit, you know, there's uh, public transit that could get you there really easily. And I, I wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, one about resolutions is that actually I was uh, able to fulfill two of my New Year's resolutions this year, and I usually just don't even have them because I, you know, like you, I think they're ridiculous. But well, you've already reason, fulfilled them. We just started. <laughs> no, for I, they were a resolution by January first. I oh. had to finish my book, and I had to record the CD with a band. So we, we got them both done. And everything is looking good for 2000. Uh, about that meeting, because, you know, I, I've actually been working in radio for years. I was with Free Speech Radio News for years, and I, I'm, they went off the air, you know, and I'm just seeing how the whole market is changing. So I'm looking for new models, just like everyone else, for how uh, we can sustain alternative media in this country. So I think it's a very, very important discussion, and I keep bringing up that the United States is considered 37th in the world on the Reporters Without Borders World Press Freedom Index. So we shouldn't be very proud of that. And it's not because of government control so much of media. It's corporate control. So I, people have got to find a way to get the alternative media to survive. Mark, i got to tell you, I have talked to lots and lots of people in, in all different aspects. I've talked to people in the corporate media, people in alternative media, and they're all saying the same thing, which is everything is moving onto the Internet audio and video it's all moving on to the internet it's all becoming digital streaming stuff roku hulu dvrs people with their smartphones and their tablets and and it's all all the content is moving away and i just posted on facebook about how cable tv's ratings are plummeting i mean it's all moving on to the internet uh, and nobody has figured out how to monetize the thing. So everybody is facing the exact same challenge, whether it's Alternet, whether it's Huffington Post, whether it's us, you know, Tom Hartman, whoever it is, everybody's facing the same dilemma. It's all moving on to the Internet. The consumer's in complete control. But how do we sustain it? How do you monetize it? You got any ideas? There are some models. I like the idea that it's going multimedia, too, that radio... Um, hosts are streaming now and that you've got something to watch when you you can watch you and listen to you you can do the same thing with Tom Hartman over there free speech TV and other places that's something that other networks that I've worked with I just couldn't convince them that that's what people want they really want to see your face this is a multimedia world where everyone can have their own TV station news agency radio podcast it's all one thing now but I do see there is by the way, I called to talk about the legalization of marijuana in Washington. <laughs> okay. but, but I know you guys now. did that, too, in and Washington State, and you're about to come out with your own dispensaries and, and retail stores. Yes. I did want to mention there's a guy in the Midwest in uh, who in Iowa, actually, who has a program called the Fallon Forum, and he's been able to sustain what he's doing. I think he's one of those guys that moved from radio to the web. And he's got some sponsors, you know, and there are other folks, too, I've seen who have um, like Jeff Santos out of Boston has a, a labor union, you know, helping sponsor the program. So that's one way people have gone. But as far as legalization of marijuana, um, what people don't realize is that Washington State, as of last year, made the recreational uh, possession and use of marijuana legal. The problem here is, is that the initiative was written so open-ended that uh, all of the regulation for the distribution, sale, ex growing, et cetera, of marijuana was turned over to the state liquor board, which was 
completely unprepared to handle the regulation of a substance that it had no, you know, knowledge of and no information about. So it's been really difficult. We do not yet have those laws which will regulate the sale, distribution, and growing of marijuana. Well, Mark, it's almost, I gotta, it almost took away the medicinal marijuana program well, completely. Well, i got to tell you, though, Colorado seems to have done a really nice job. I don't know every, you know, Johnson, but I thank you very much, and I really appreciate you reminding me not to forget about Washington State. That's a mistake I'm not going to make. I'm not going to mistake, uh, make a mistake and forget about Washington. That you can hear the show commercial free when it's convenient to you. Plus, get all the Beyond the Norm extra segments at no charge. This is the Norm and Goldman Show. This is a very potent weapon. I think it's uh, silly. When you're listening to the radio, 